All right, welcome everybody. We're welcoming everybody in. Hi, Liberty fans, what's up? Welcome to the New York Liberty WNBA pre-draft virtual party. I'm your host for the day. I'm Roz Gold on Wade, and I am so excited for so many reasons. And the first one being the WNBA is celebrating its 25th season. And the New York Liberty has a legacy and proud part of each and every one of those 25 seasons as one of the original eight franchises. You got to own the crown. Uh, I'm from Queens, New York City myself, and I remember what it was like to go to the very first New York Liberty Games. And I personally cannot wait to experience what it's going to be like to go to the first Liberty Games in Brooklyn and finally play at Barclays Center. It's going to be amazing. This is a fresh season. It's a fresh start. And tonight marks a fresh chapter with the WNBA draft and the New York Liberty has the number six, 17, the number 25 and number 29 picks in tonight's draft. All right, so we got a great lineup for you. Um, tonight we'll hear from a number of special guests from the New York Liberty family including New York Liberty CEO, Kia Clark is gonna be joining us. Uh, Liberty legend, Kim Hampton is gonna pull up. That's gonna be awesome. We'll hear from 2020 all rookie team selection. Jazz Jones is coming to join us for the pre-draft party. And we'll get all the behind the scenes, some intel, thoughts about coming with what we're doing in the draft, what we're doing this season with New York Liberty GM general manager, Jonathan Kolb. And of course, we've got an exclusive special message just for you, the fans, from last year's number one overall pick in Sabrina Ionescu coming to you today during the party. Oh, and throughout the hour today, we're gonna have polls, we're gonna have trivia, we're gonna have prizes. <laughs> so make sure you're paying attention and make sure you're playing along. You won't wanna miss these. Guys, the WNBA draft will be uh, televised on ESPN and the ESPN app uh, with coverage starting at 7 p.m. Eastern for this virtual draft. Make sure you're tuning in right after our party on ESPN and the ESPN app. On behalf of the New York Liberty franchise and the dedicated ownership of team governors, Joe and Clara Wusai, I just want to thank you all for being here. And I want to thank you all for being uh, loyal fans and start this off with a cheers to a fresh new season. All right, let's get on to our pre-draft party. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna start y'all off with some prizes. How about that? Let's start off with some prizes. I got trivia question number one coming your way, okay? First the rules. The first person to correctly answer in the chat wins, okay? And you can't win twice. So first person, you answer right in the chat, you get a chance at the prize. Wanna know what the prize is? The prize is a signed 2020 Sabrina Yescu Rookie Edition jersey, autographed, signed, Rookie Edition 2020 Sabrina Yescu jersey. Here's the question. How many rookies were on the 2020 roster? How many rookies were on the 2020 roster? Put it in the chat and we'll come back with a winner for you. All right, guys, uh, the New York Liberty launched its Own the Crown, hashtag Own the Crown campaign, and we've got a little introduction video for you. Let's check it out. We're here. And you hear that? We're making noise. We're making moves. We hold the blueprint and we hold the power that runs through the veins of our city, from the kicks on the courts to the tops of the skyscrapers. We reach above. We stay loud when the world goes silent. We show up and we show out. We stay true to ourselves while we enact change. We are an untouchable force, an undeniable influence. You see it. We're the advocates, the heart, the mind, the soul, the pioneers. We've done it. We're doing it. And trust, we will continue to. We give it our all consistently. So let this serve as a reminder. This is our court. This is our city. And we, we own the crown. I love it. 
we love to see it. You got to own your crown. You better tilt that crown. <laughs> um, that is awesome. And welcome in. If you're just joining us, welcome to the New York Liberty pre-draft party. <laughs> um, right now, we're going to bring to the stage somebody who is uh, near and dear to my heart and part of the leadership team for the New York Liberty franchise. New York Liberty CEO, Kia Clark, joins me on stage. Hey, Kia, what's up? I can't hear you. Are you muted? Happy draft day, by the way. Happy draft day to you, too. I'm glad to be here. Great to see you, Roz. Yeah, so good to see you, always. We came up together. <laughs> we sure did. We sure did. And here we are. Uh -huh. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. But, you know, uh, I know you're leading things for the Liberty right now, but um, I also know you're a former Hooper um, from a fan perspective, from a lover of the game perspective. What does it mean to you as the WNBA steps into season 25? Count it. Yes. Um, you know, I think all anniversary years are special. I've had, you know, the benefit of being with this team for a few of those celebrations, but more than ever, you know, the 25th really coming into that significant year, um, significant legacy as an original team, I think, um, and also coming off the year we've had, you know, just without live events, without, you know, being around people or, you know, uh, watching on television and rooting for, um, you know, your favorite team, but coming together in the 25th season and doing it at Barclays Center in the heart of Brooklyn, like there's no feeling. I know the fans are at the edge of their seats. We talk about it, I hear about it, we read about it on social media. So um, we just can't contain ourselves over here. And, and as we get closer and closer and we plan more and more, you know, the excitement is really, really brewing and we just can't wait until, until May 14th. I can't wait either. Um, and, and now I kind of want you to put that CEO hat, that business hat back on. And from a business perspective this time, how have you seen the business, the branding, the visibility and overall financial opportunity grow, not only for the league, but for the players themselves over the years? Yeah. You know, and I never take off my business hat. So so you don't have to tell me to put it back on. <laughs> Own the crown. Own the crown. Own the crown, right? Own it. You know, there's there's two things that and, and as a as a business leader that I'm always paying attention to in this league. And it's first the basketball. It is undeniable that that the level of play has improved um, over time, over the years. And, you know, every single season, every single playoff um, matchup, you know, you see this really high level and high caliber talent, you know, that are, that are coming out. They're game ready. They're ready to be in this league. So I think that first and foremost is why we're seeing more visibility why there is all this you know authenticity about this game and and, and the respect that the women finally are are receiving and i often and always couple that with the off court um from a social impact perspective i think we all witnessed um what occurred this past summer um in the wobble in terms of social justice issues and the women of the WNBA really standing up and using their voices and the Liberty leading in a lot of those, um, you know, activity and a lot of that activity. So that is the reason why, you know, as the trajectory of the business, the partners who want to align with those types of initiatives, the fans who really stand behind us because we stand for something that is basketball, but transcends basketball. That's why we're starting to see growth. That's why there were more people more than ever that, you know, watched games last summer. And I'm really, really hopeful that that continues, you know, especially as people in general are really elevating and celebrating women. Um, we've been here. So, you know, now is the time to continue what you've been doing. If you've already been doing it, call a friend, call a family member, but it's a movement and, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Absolutely. Definitely not a moment. It is a movement that has been in motion. Um, and so, you know, I'm excited. Absolutely. Ratings have been up, you know, all of the visibility, the social engagement about around the W and its players has been up. And for all the teams now who played last season in the, in the bubble, you know, you get to return home. And for the Liberty, that means finally, you know, being able to play in Brooklyn at Barclays. Um, what, what does that mean for, for this franchise and, and for you? Yeah, you know, although it's a new venue for us, it's like, it's like a homecoming, um, you know, to return to the big stage. And, you know, when the, you know, Roz, under the, 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 the bright lights 
um, and you know, hopefully in, in front of um, some fans, um, that'll be a day that I know our players will really appreciate and our coaches will re really appreciate, but mostly our fans. Like, you know, the women deserve um, this type of venue and I know that they're gonna show up and show out. Um, so, you know, um, we're ready, we're ready. Um, in this year, 25, how does the Liberty plan to commemorate fans and, leg and legends and history um, for the season? Huge undertaking, you know, as an original team, um, and hopefully everyone has already seen our rollout of the 25th anniversary logo and uh, the, you know, milestone moments across every year that we highlighted. We'll continue to do that over time. And I think we're in a really fortunate position where we have lots of amazing uh, Liberty alum. We have the legends, we have the ring of honor who have gone on to do really big and great things. You know, they're very active in the basketball space. They're active in other industries. So we're incredibly excited to honor and commemorate um, those moments throughout the season as much as possible. Um, so stay tuned. I can't give it all away tonight, Roz. Stay tuned. Um, <laughs> secrets will be out pretty soon. Okay, absolutely. And later on in today's show, we will be hearing from one of those legends and Kim Hampton is joining us later on in the show. But um, tell me more, we just watched a video about the Own the Crown campaign. Tell me more about it. Yes, um, so Own the Crown, and you even alluded to it earlier, we've all seen culturally, you know, hey queen, fix your hey. crown. You know, it, it's, it's something that, you know, as women and people who are allies of women are really, um, uh, celebrating right now. And I think um, I'm most proud though, that there's been an evolution of what this team identity is, of what our brand really signifies. And we started, and I know the Liberty Loyals who are listening today, they know where we started with show up and showing up for things that matter. We haven't run away from that. We've just really doubled down. And that ultimately became Liberty Loud. And Liberty Loud, um, which is a representation of you know, liberation and being an original team and being unapologetic, but mostly determined to get that elusive championship, we're not steering away from that at all. Again, it's like the 2.0 version. If you're Liberty Loud and you're standing flat-footed and you're secure in who you are and celebrating what we represent, then we could go no place else but to own the crown, to own our position in this city, to own our position as the longest standing women's uh, professional league and as a part of that, the team, the Liberty. So um, we can't wait to see, you know, people really demonstrating what it means to be a, a woman who leads, a woman who um, exhorts regality, a woman who exhibits legacy. So that's what owning the crown is really about, you know, and, and what we hope that the fans um, and mostly our players are going to embody uh, this upcoming summer. Kia, you absolutely embody the own the crown campaign and motto and mantra. Absolutely. And the way that you hold yourself, the way you lead and the way that you have risen, if you will. And you and I go back, um, you know, this is a time right now that we're currently in of amplifying women's voices, creating space and opportunity. But I remember, I don't want to age us, but maybe even 10 years ago, um, you, know, you and I both worked for the Liberty franchise, but in smaller roles. Um, what has it meant for you to have your career rise with the Liberty franchise and now sit here as, as a, a woman and the team CEO? Yeah, you know, when I reflect on it and, and you use the, the term smaller, smaller roles and, and it was a decade or more, um, I don't mind aging us. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it, it's, it's been you know, a long time really studying and being a student of this business and being a, a witness to this game and how it has just gotten better over time. And, and um, those smaller roles are really what I think prepared me for this moment that we're in right now. Um, understanding the, all of the idiosyncrasies of this business, understanding who our fans are and why they come out and support us, understanding who are the partners that should and could be partnering with us, understanding how we can really um, create impact in the community, supporting players, like all of those things are things that I've had the privilege to understand and learn because of those smaller roles and as I move through um, the ranks in this position. So I could not be more excited and more proud to sit at, here as the CEO. And I only hope that I'm inspiring someone in the next generation, particularly that young girls and young 
girls of color um, can see that, you know, passion and commitment and hard work could really um, transition into something that, you know, is really a dream come true for me. So um, really happy that we're still we're still vibing. We're still working together, even after all these years. And that's another thing. You meet good people, you stick with good people. So, um, you know, uh, really excited. And thank you for being with us here tonight, Roz. Always appreciate it. Oh, yeah. This is this is family. This is, you know, the team that I'm from New York. I'm from Queens. It's the team that my mother took me to see games of. And um, no matter what happens, that is something that's in your blood. Um, Kia, I remember, you know, the days we used to, you know, be up, up late wearing a ton of hats, you know, from everything from partnerships to digital content to the next game's preview <laughs> to, to doing a, a play, a, you know, an interview and just putting it all together. So I am personally inspired and so proud of you as a friend um, and also, you know, for what you represent uh, as, as a woman and as a black woman in, you know, the representation and the opportunity and the success matters. So uh, I'm excited for this season and for you. Thank you for joining us, Kia. Thank you. We'll see you soon, Raz. Oh, God, that was all the feels. All right. Uh, we are back for the New York Liberty pre-draft party. And I have a winner to our first trivia question. The question was, how many rookies were on the 2020 roster? And the answer is Seven. There were seven rookies on the 2020 roster. The winner gets a signed 2020 Sabrina Ionescu rookie edition jersey. And the winner is Gary Hotko. What's up, Gary? Uh, good, to, good to see you, hear you, see your name out here. A member of the New York Liberty staff will reach out to help you receive your prize. All right. I got another prize for y'all, though. I'm not done. I got another trivia question. So we're gonna have more than one winner, okay? So here's trivia question number two. Um, first person to correctly answer in the chat wins. So get ready, get those fingers ready. The prize, oh, what the hey. Well, we're generous today. Another signed 2020 Sabrina Ionescu rookie edition jersey. We got another one coming your way for a winner. In the chat, first person to answer. Kim Hampton was the first draft pick by the New York Liberty in the 1997 Elite Draft. What number pick was she overall? Kim Hampton, what number pick was she overall in the 97 Elite Draft? She was the New York Liberty's first ever draft pick. Put that answer in there, we'll get back to you. All right, we are now going to bring up the woman herself, Kim Hampton, New York Liberty legend, is here to join us on stage. Hey, everybody. Hey, Kim, I can hear you. I don't you see, see it. There oh. you go. <laughs> hey, it is so good to see you. You too, Roz. How you been? I've been well. How are you doing? You look fabulous. Thank you. You too. What's up, Liberty Fam? Yes. Yay. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> You know, we're here to celebrate this draft right now. Um, and we actually have a whole trivia question about you being the first ever draft pick uh, for the New York Liberty in the 97 elite draft. Yeah. What do you what do you remember about that day? Oh, my gosh. Well, actually, I was in Italy at the time and um, we were. Uh, well, no, actually. Well, I found out I was coming to New York. I was going to be drafted because I, I did miss it because I was in Italy. But I, it was just. We didn't know what to expect. I mean, we were overseas and Renee Brown came over to, um, you know, to just to, I guess, to make a selection and to pick. And we were all just so nervous. We didn't know what to expect. Um, and I remember um, finding out I was going to New York and then I was kind of like, wow, New York. Oh, my gosh, that's going to be amazing. And, you know, and it just happened. Everything happened so fast. We could have never fathomed just how fast we would just I mean, just women's basketball would just take off. I mean, we were instantaneous rock stars. Do you hear me? I mean, it was it was just amazing. It was nothing that we could have ever fathomed. Could you give me like a standout memory from that inaugural WNBA season in 97? Because I remember, I mean, instant rock stars, hype, hoopla, attention. Tell me about that inaugural season. 
Uh, it was it was so many wonderful memories. Again, you know, when you think back to it, <clears throat> it was the very beginning. So a lot of things that went on was trial and error. You know, you think about the coaches that came in. There were no professional coaches, women, and I'm speaking of women. There were no women coaches that had that professional experience. Nancy Darsh was our first coach. She was coming out of Ohio State. Rest in peace, Nancy. Um, I mean, it was it was just so much trial and error. I mean, I think back to the first game, all of the the um, the hype that was leading up to the game. I mean, then you had, you know, the endorsements. It was so much. And then just trying to play. I mean, now, now let's just think about, you know, wrapping our minds around playing. And every night, I remember every night being a battle. I don't care if it was the first place team playing the team in the last place. I mean, it was a battle every single night, um, you know, and it was just trying to learn how to juggle family and friends because we were so used to playing abroad that we didn't have to worry about. It. We may have had visitors come every now and then, but now everyone was calling us. They wanted to come to the games. So now we're trying to get rest. You know, we're trying to do promotions and promote the league. And if you had endorsement deals, you had those appearances. I mean, it was just a lot to learn to juggle. But I mean, more than anything, I mean, I remember our team. We were the oldest team in the league, but we had each other's back. I mean, <laughs> it was just so funny. I mean, we would go to war for <laughs> anyone. I mean, we just had each other's back. And it was, and that's what it was. And even on the, you know, against the other teams, we had rivalries and but we still loved each other you know so it was it was a real sisterhood because it wasn't like you know you you and Kia you know you guys talked about how it's grown and the collective bargaining the very first collective bargaining agreement I mean it was terrible I don't we didn't, I don't we didn't even have insurance after the season was over you know I mean crazy crazy stuff but we would have done it all over again to have played and to have been a part of this and now just to think that it's 25 years into existence, you know, it's it's like we would have never because you would hear so many rumors that, oh, it's not going to last. It's going to fold and this, that and another. But it's just been amazing. And those were just some of the and just playing in NBA arenas, um, getting a taste of what it's like to play on a big stage or just, you know, to scratch the surface of what it's like in the NBA and things like that. I, re I remember we got a chance to fly on the Knicks jet, you know, and uh, shh, secretly <laughs> we got fines later. But but still to have that experience. I mean, those were some of the most amazing experiences. Um, of our lives. I mean, it was just crazy. And the celebrities, I mean, it was just so much. Oof. And yeah. the fans. Oh my God. And the fans just, oh my gosh. I mean, people, I mean, we were averaging, you know, 15, 17, 18,000 fans and even sold out a few times, you know, just knowing that we had the fans behind us. It was just amazing. Incredible incredible stories and just kind of reflections on what that time was like. And as we sit here, 25 years, count it, um, <laughs> on draft on draft night. Um, what advice would you give to this incoming rookie class about sustaining the league for the next 25 years? Um, I would say do everything in your power to maintain your physical health. Uh, that's mentally and physically because the product on the court is what sustains us. And then also how you treat the fans. Uh, that is super, super important. I think to today, that's why the fans love us so much because we would leave a game. And if we had to stand outside an hour signing every autograph, I mean, we would, um, if, you know, and so those little things are important, touching people's lives. And I know sometimes you get tired and you have appearances, but just remember that might be a person's only opportunity to ever, ever, ever meet a professional athlete, especially a female professional athlete. So whatever you do, make sure that you wear that and you are representing that 25 so that it goes into 50 and it goes into 100 and on and on and on. So just make sure you do your best on and off the court just to support what has already been the ground that's already been laid. Absolutely. Um, and another important number here is eight. Um, you know, the Liberty are one of the original eight franchises in the WNBA. Um, what has always been special about this fan base and playing for New York City? Well, New York City, not everyone can play here. Uh, New York City is a very intelligent, has a very intelligent fan base. And 
they are more like a blue collar type of fan base. They don't care about the hype and the and the big names. If you don't come here and you don't work hard and you don't show up to play, you'll get booed just like everybody else. So we've been booed a few times at the garden and everything. Um, but it's it's just important to know that people here, especially in New York, they have options. There are two NBA teams here. There are two hockey teams. There are two baseball teams. There's a WNBA team. And then there's a plethora of other stuff that goes on in New York. So you have to know that when you come here to play, you better be about your business. Come and give you, and they don't care if you lose, if you notice, well, the Knicks are doing better now, but if you could be one of the worst places, but every night, if you come and you play hard, the fans will appreciate that. So um, yeah, that's just what I remember about, yeah, New York. As somebody who has laid the groundwork, not only for the, the New York Liberty, but for the league on a whole, um, what stood out to you about the way the women of the WNBA last year really shined and stepped up um, mm -hmm. kind of off the court with uh, how they represented and advocated for social, racial justice, police brutality, and beyond? Well, I think it just what stood out to me was it didn't matter any type of repercussions that could have come from it. They stood for justice. They stood for what was right. And I think as women, we are naturally nurturers and we understand, hey, you know, we have to stand up for this because it isn't right. I mean, there are parents that invest in their children and they send their children off to do well and they want to grow, watch, want to see their kids grow older and have families and, and things like that. And so you know, I was just really, really proud of the sisterhood that these women stood together and said, you know what? Hey, it's time for somebody to take a stand and we'll do it. And so they just made me feel so proud um, to take the lead and the shirts from the jerseys and then holding arms in unity. And no matter what, um, I was proud of the league, the, the front office. I was proud of just the administration and just all of the teams. So it really made me feel proud. And, and I know it's going to continue because the problems are still continuing. I mean, they're still ongoing. So we have a lot of work to do. And But the women, and this is what I know, the women of the WNBA are not afraid to utilize that platform to get it done and to make it happen. Absolutely, Kim. And I, I can't thank you enough for being here, as always, representing so well for the New York Liberty family uh, as a legend. And it's been great to see you as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you during the season. And I look forward to seeing you guys too, fans, New York Liberty fans. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim. Shout out to the fans. Kim loves you. That's a legend. And it's really important as we celebrate, celebrate, you know, season 25 here that we constantly touch base with and retell the stories and intertwine, you know, the great rich history of this franchise and of the league as it continues to make steps forward. That 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 is absolutely a part of the fabric and the richness of what makes this uh, this league so special. All right, so let's get to the trivia question because we have a prize for the winner. The prize a signed 2020 Sabrina Ionescu rookie edition jersey. And the question was, Kim Hampton was the first draft pick by the New York Liberty in the 97 Elite Draft. What number pick was she overall? The answer is number four. <laughs> and the winner uh, of the uh, trivia challenge was Shalimar Phillips. Congratulations, Shalimar. Thank you for playing. A member of the Liberty staff will be reaching out to make sure you get your signed jersey. All right, so on to the Part of our pre-draft party show, we are going to chat with 2020 All-Rookie Team selection. Jazz Jones is in the building here today to represent for the Liberty. Uh, absolutely youth movement here right now for the Liberty as we bring up a rookie selection from last year. Oh, my God, they grew up so fast. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so actually, I think we are having a little technical difficulty with Jazz. So... I think for right now, while we wait to get Jazz on and make sure everything is okay, I'll take you to another conversation, all right? We've got the draft coming up tonight. The New York Liberty have the number 6, 17, 25, and 29 picks in the draft. So we've got a, I had a conversation leading up to this draft 
with GM Jonathan Cole to break down, you know, a preview coming into the season, identity, goals, what this team is going to be about, and absolutely what the needs are in this draft, what he's trying to get out of it, what he's trying to fill, and also some updates on the health and also returners coming to the team this season. So let's take a look at this conversation with uh, New York Liberty General Manager Jonathan Cole. The 25th, it's the 25th WNBA, WNBA season. The season. New York Liberty is one of the original eight teams. What, what's it mean just to uh, see the season, see a 25th year for the Liberty? I mean, it's incredible. And I think for all the teams that have, you know, that 25 patch on their jersey this year, it's it's a it's a sign of, of greatness and it's a sign of strength and resilience and perseverance. And so for us here in New York, uh, we like that grit, right? We like we like what we earn, and and so you know to be here and see it, it's something special. I'm uh I'm here in Barclays Center right now, and can't wait for for fans to be here with us at some point. What's that gonna mean this season to finally play at Barclays Center in Brooklyn? What's the impact that's gonna make? Yeah, I mean it's huge. We it's it feels like a lot of false starts, right? I mean we're in Westchester, we're coming to to Barclays in Brooklyn, and then the pandemic, right? And it it uprooted a lot of lives and for us our plans to be here. Uh, but we're moving in. Uh, we're getting we're getting set up here, and I think it's just gonna be a real special place uh, for fans to come and watch some great basketball. Right. And between, you know, the pandemic and just an, an, an unprecedented bubble season and the injuries and everything that happened yeah. last year, you come into this season. Um, what are the goals and the identity of this team and, and this season? Yeah, we talk a lot about that. What does it mean to be a Liberty? Right. What, what is that? And for us, it's just it's a collective group that that gives it their all every single night. And I think you saw that last year. I think in the bubble, we had players, we were losing, but they're diving for balls with a minute left. We've got Jazz Jones out there pumping up her teammates. I mean, we've got an exciting young group. In terms of philosophy and what we're doing, um, we're trying to be ultra athletic defensively, really get into people. We want to be a defensive team. Uh, we took strides last year, year over year from the year before. And now it's where do we go from there? Um, offensively, we think we're going to be getting some firepower back uh, in the form of like a Becca Allen, for example. Um, and then we add someone like Sammy Whitcomb and of course, Natasha Howard and Benai Jelani. I think the offense is going to be pretty potent, but we're excited on both sides of the ball. All right, let's get specific then. Of course, we want to know what's the latest update with uh, the number one overall pick last year, Sabrina Ionescu coming back from injury. Yeah, uh, coming into, I think, really her first year again, right? I mean, she, she got hurt, unfortunately, so early last year. Um, Sabrina has been ultra diligent with her rehab and her recovery, um, just as one might think she would be. Um, she's doing very well. well. Walt got to see her last week, I believe, and, and reports were uh, quite good. Uh, she, shot, she shot the ball incredibly well, um, and I, I think Sabrina's going to be ready to roll here, here very soon. You know, while she was out, another rookie uh, had an opportunity to shine, and that was Jasmine Jones, all rookie team. What can we expect from her this season? Yeah, more, more of the same. I mean, Jazz just continues to add to her game. Uh, when you put her in the game, she has a presence um, defensively, offensively. Um, she has a unique skill set, and that athleticism really shines through. I think she's somebody that's going to really propel our defense this year and be an anchor for our defense. Um, and I think you'll see more of the same. And, and honestly, I'm excited for fans to see Jazz in person. I think that's going to be a special relationship between the fans and Jazz. Man, it's going to be so electric just to have some amount of fans back. You know, they'll figure out how many, but just really feeling that presence and connecting with the players that way. Um, new to the squad, Natasha Howard, what's the plan yeah. around her and how is she going to become part of the game plan here for the Liberty? Yeah, man, I, I'm so excited for Natasha. Uh, Natasha, just if you, and I know you have, you follow her career. She's worked for everything and she's taken a, a next step at every stop that she's gone to. And she's been wildly successful uh, doing that. And now she gets to play under these lights and it's time for Natasha to take what's hers. And that's, you know, reclaim that MVP conversation that was, that was there a couple of years ago and form a dynamic duo with Sabrina. Um, I think that duo is going to put a lot of defenses in, in a hard spot. Um, and, and I'm just excited for her to step into the opportunity. I know she's ready for it. Why Natasha Howard? Why not Natasha Howard? Natasha Howard, she's one of one. They're, 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 she's the only one in the league that can do what she does and impact the game defensively, be incredibly efficient offensively, but um, just put 
put defenses in positions that they don't really know how to counter. Um, you know, I was watching the game the other day. Uh, she was playing against uh, Becca Allen. Uh, and, and you just see some of the quickness that she has is the in and out dribbles and transition for her size and length. Um, it's, it's special. So for us to add that level of player, it's big time here in New York. Absolutely. And just overarching, you know, any other uh, returners or new players you want to highlight? Also, do you mind giving us a health update just coming into the season? Anything else we've missed here? Yeah. Um, well, I think Benajah Laney, I mean, that was, and Sammy Whitcomb, those are two major additions for us. Um, Benajah, similar to Natasha in that she's worked for everything. Uh, and now, you know, winning most improved and coming in here, um, she is going to add a level of versatility that we didn't have before. Um, and then you look at Sammy. Sammy's a veteran, a champion, someone that can really shoot the three ball and stretch the defense for us. So uh, I'm excited for both of them. Absolutely. Um, in terms of health, uh, everyone seems to be relatively healthy. And, and, and that's the thing. I think right now with Asia Durr, we're figuring out her status and we will, you know, continue to monitor that. But otherwise, we're getting good reports. And let's just keep our fingers crossed that as people come back from overseas, that that remains the same. And lastly, because I know everybody loves uh, Sabrina Ionescu information. She, what is she doing right now for workouts? She's completely back and ready to go. Yeah, no, she's back and ready to go. Uh, she's been working out really hard on the West Coast. Um, we had Walt go out and see her and, and work with her a bit. Um, and yeah, the reports are great. So she's she's going to be here. And and I think with Sabrina, it's again, it's, it's it is her first year. I think she should be eligible for like rookie of the year this year. I think the league thinks otherwise, but, but uh, it's her first year. And so I want everyone to be patient, right? Cause greatness takes time, but, but we're excited about her. And I think, uh, you know, she'll be, she'll be great. I won't forget. I think it was her second game of the season where she really exploded. Uh, and so that was um, really great to see. And on, uh, right before the injury. So absolutely yeah. super excited. Oh, and coming into, you know, last season, it was obviously an, an odd year and it was hard to train. Now you've got all these new faces and new players. Like what is the training camp? Um, what is this kind of ability to get ready before the season going to look like for you guys? <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's exciting to actually get to, to prep for it. It's exciting to, you know, not have to share a court with 11 other teams and, and be able to be in our own building. Um, that's going to feel really nice. Um, and so, yeah, I think you said it. We get to, our coaching staff gets to teach now. They get to take the time to really go over how we want to play. Uh, so it'll, it'll pay dividends on the court, but we couldn't be more excited to, to finally be in Brooklyn. Okay, and today is the draft. Um, yep. So can you just um, tell us what the needs and the goals of the team are heading into the draft? You've got four picks, 6, 17, 25, 29. What are the goals and needs? Yeah, I think, and I know a lot of people here say this, and, and I don't know if they believe it or if it's become cliche, but it's the facts and it's truth. Like, we look for character first. So you have to come in here and, and, and understand who we're about. It takes sacrifice. It takes the collective group. And so we really look for that. I mean, we talk to these players at length. I think if you talk to any of the prospects, they'll say they talk to New York most, right? Because we're talking to basically everybody. Um, and so that's number one. We got to get the right type of people in here. And two, in terms of this draft, it's an interesting one. Uh, Dallas controls the board for the most part. And so it's, it's interesting to try to figure out who's going to go where. In terms of what we're looking for, what is an elite level skill? So what's going to translate and, and what's an elite level skill that, that we need? Um, and I don't want to give too much insight into that, but that's what we're looking for, an elite level skill and a special type of person. Um, skills can come in the form of shooting. It can come in the form of motor, defensive versatility. Um, but this is going to be somebody uh, that we select that'll be here for four years. And so we want to invest in that player as much as they invest in us. And, and I think we'll get somebody pretty good there at number six. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time here. And uh, we wish you be the best of luck in the draft. I know last year was a big success. You got everybody you wanted. Remember that? <laughs> yes, I do. I do remember that. We hit, we hit those targets. <laughs> right, right. So um, just wishing you the best and uh, we'll be watching along for the number six pick to get it started for the New York Liberty. Thank you so much for your time, Jonathan. Always. Thank you so much. Right before the draft from general, general manager Jonathan Kolb. Uh, thank you so much for his time. All right, guys.
We've got our third and final trivia question for you guys. I've got one more prize to give away. Um, so I want to make sure that everybody is ready. Again, first person to answer with the right answer in the chat wins. Can't win twice. So we need a new winner. You want to know what the prize is? I'm going to be generous again. I'm going to give you another signed 2020 Sabrina Ionescu Rookie Edition jersey coming your way. This is the final trivia question. So get them trigger fingers going. We got to get ready. The question is, what year was Kia Stokes drafted? What year was Stokes drafted? Get in the chat. Get in the chat. <laughs> and we'll be back with a winner shortly. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to try it again. We're going to bring to the stage uh, a chat with 2020 all-rookie team selection, Jazz Jones. <laughs> What's up, Jazz? Hold on. We can't hear you. Okay. There we go. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? You know, you gave you gave us a little bit of anticipation. We had to wait for your arrival. <laughs> oh man, listen, my, my my computer was messing up a little bit. I was having some technical difficulties over here for real. <laughs> oh, bro, we understand. I mean, this is part of life with a pandemic. So here we are having our virtual draft party, our pre-draft party. And actually, it brings me to your experience. Tonight's draft night, you were a part of the first ever virtual draft last year. What was that experience like? It was cool. I mean, like, it, it was it was cool. I was with, I was still in Louisville. I was with my uh, my friends. I wasn't even with my family. My family was home in Florida. So I was with my friends on campus and school, um, just in the room, in the living room, anticipating. Like nobody was expecting me to get drafted in the first round. So like when it happened, everything was a complete surprise, complete shock. Everybody was just like, oh shoot, like this really happened. Like it was, it was complete shock and everything. But it was, it was a cool experience. Um, I mean, I'm just humbled and blessed just to be be here and everything. So like that, that whole experience was dope. Yeah, and I mean, you've absolutely made the most of it. Your first season was an unprecedented season in the bubble. Um, what did you learn about yourself in that rookie year? Uh, I learned a lot. Um, mainly it started off with uh, always being prepared. Preparation was key. Um, and if you're not prepared on and off the court, you're gonna get exposed on the court for sure. Um, and I just learned like learned about myself, um, knowing like what I like and what I don't like. Um, uh, Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, you good. <laughs> okay. So just um, knowing what I don't like and like and, you know, trying out new things. Like I started reading more in the bubble and everything like that. So that was okay, what you read? What you read? So I was reading um, the series of Sister Soldier. It started with the coldest winter ever and all the rest of the books. So right now I'm on like the third book and she just had a new book that just came out. So I'm a little behind right now. So yeah, I got to catch up. <laughs> Okay, no, absolutely. I remember Sister Soldier, coldest winter ever. Whew. Yeah, yeah. And that, I was like, oh my God, it kind of blew my mind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we can do a book club later. We'll we'll catch up on the other side and do a little. I'm, I'm I, I, I love that book so much. I, like I started, I started reading it when I was in high school. My mom got it for me when I was in high school, but I didn't finish it. So I finished it. Like I started over again in the bubble. Finished it. And it like love it. That is so cool. I wonder. I mean, you'll be busy with the season, but it could be cool possibly to really try to do some kind of like book club, you know, Definitely. or week of the month, especially if you're still reading, you know, a lot now. But anyway, you got a lot of hooping to do. And speaking of the hooping, um, last season you were an all rookie team selection. Congratulations again. What did you work on skill wise to help you build on it coming into this season? Oh, uh, in the weight room, getting stronger, uh, putting up a lot of shots, uh, tightening up my ball handling and things like that. Just and then watching a lot of film, um, like learning the game still, um, just trying to focus on being more prepared on and off the court and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so what's it going to be like for you? to play in Brooklyn, to finally step oh, on the floor. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so excited. Like, I really wish we could start tomorrow. <laughs> like, I'm just so excited, man. Like, because I haven't, I'm like, this is my, what, third or fourth time coming to New York, and I haven't, like, been around before, like, 
before last year. I've never been to New York before, never been to Brooklyn. So like just, oh my God, I'm just so excited, man. I'm ready to see the fans, ready to play in front of fans again, because that was my biggest thing at Louisville. Like I love hyping up the crowd, get a feeding off the crowd energy and stuff like that. So I cannot wait, man. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, real quick wins. So you haven't taken a subway? No. <laughs> okay. You never had a you never had a New York bagel, never had a New York slice of pizza. Okay, okay, we're gonna wait on that. So I had a chopped cheese and I had a bacon, egg, and cheese from the bodega. <laughs> oh, I told you about bodegas. Okay, so you you good to go. <laughs> hey, well, I'm from Florida, so we say you know it's just a corner store, you know. But y'all say y'all say bodega up here, but you know. <laughs> it all works. Corner store, bodega. We got exactly. You'll you'll fit in just fine. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we'll we'll make sure that uh, you get properly acclimated to New York City. I know right now there's all sorts of COVID protocols you got to watch out with during season as well. But eventually, I will personally make sure that you get to some of the. Uh, as I'm from Queens myself, Queens, New York City. So okay. okay. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to congratulate you on a great season last year and wish you the best of luck this season. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. All right, thank you for joining us. No problem. How awesome was that with Jasmine Jones? Uh, Jazz is so much good, fun personality, and hopefully, um, you know, just can continue to bring everything that she was able to do in the bubble last year and bottle that up and bring that into the season. Barclays, you saw how hyped she was to play at Barclays. We got to bring that energy for sure and own the crown in Brooklyn. All right, let's get to the prizes and the trivia question because we do have a winner. The question was, what year was Kia Stokes drafted? The prize is a signed 2020 Sabrina Ionescu rookie edition jersey. And the answer is she was drafted in 2015. <laughs> so the winner of the uh, the Trivia question is Janae Bonnie. Please excuse me if I'm saying that wrong. It also might be Jan Janae Boney. But congratulations. Thank you for playing. A member of the New York Liberty staff will uh, reach out uh, and make sure you see. Speaking of jerseys, Nike dropped some incredible jerseys to commemorate the 25th WNBA season. Let's take a look. social media, the New Jersey's, um, you know, have been making a lot of noise and met with a lot of praise. Um, I'm very excited, especially the New York Liberty ones are super dope. Um, which one is your favorite? Let me see in the chat, okay? Use emojis in the chat. Let me know which one is your favorite. Let me see a fire emoji for the black New York uh, Explorer jersey. But if you like the other one, if you like the uh from Equality Rebel Edition jersey. Put that uh, Statue of Liberty emoji up. Let me see the Statue of Liberty emoji for the Equality Rebel jersey in the sea foam green color. And if you like the black New York Explorer jersey, let me see a fire emoji in the chat. All right, let's do a poll and see which one wins there. Let's check out the poll. Before we check out the poll re results, we kind of have a special moment for you, last but not least. I told you we were going to have something exclusive and special for you. And we have a very special message um, from last year's overall number one draft pick. Sabrina Ionescu uh, sent something just for you. Let's check it out. Hey, Liberty, hey, Liberty family. Liberty the family. Is almost over. I've been working really hard this offseason, and I know that my teammates have as well. We cannot wait to finally pay at Barclay Center, hopefully in front of all of you. See you all soon. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Uh, we're so excited to see more from her this season, obviously. Tough to have a season cut short with the injury, um, but 
I remember watching her play at Oregon. I covered her whole career when she played in the Pac-12 conference and she is absolutely worth all the hype and, and excitement. Um, so definitely very excited to have her back and see Sabrina Ionescu on the court. Um, also for us to relive all the joy and excitement we felt this time last season with the New York Liberty franchise getting the overall number one draft pick. That is a huge deal and game changer for our franchise. So um, absolutely, we should you know feel all that mojo again, allow that excitement to help us head into today's draft where the New York Liberty have four picks in the draft. And um, we also have results on our poll. I asked you to give me emojis for which jersey you like better, the black New York Explorer jersey or Nike's Seafoam Green Equality Rebel jersey. And guess what? It was a tie. <laughs> it was a tie. Okay, well, um, yeah, all the jerseys are fire. And don't forget, they also have the heroin jerseys, which are the all white ones as well coming out. So Nike made sure every team had three um, and everyone has uh, the Rebel uh, female empowerment storytelling, the heroin home whites, and then the uh, the home team colors for the Explorer jersey edition. Very exciting. Um, I know I'm going to cop my <laughs> jersey. Make sure you get yours. I mean, it's the talk of the town. And if you're interested in the jersey, go to NewYorkLiberty.com and get your own. You don't want to miss these. These are 25th year commemoration uh, commemorative jerseys special for this season. And honestly, they're just, they hot fire. They're super dope. So make sure you get yours. Um, all right. Well, that was a full day we just had here, y'all. I want to thank all of our guests that we had here for the New York Liberty pre-draft party. I want to thank New York Liberty CEO Kia Clark for getting us started, teaching us about the, the own, own the Crown campaign and you know, holding hers up so strong and all she represents as she leads um, and succeeds with this franchise. Hearing from Liberty legend Kim Hampton, um, an important part of this is just continuing to lift up and celebrate the rich history and heritage that this franchise and league has. Uh, New York Liberty player, 2020 all rookie team selection, Jazz Jones brought the energy and she pulled up. That was super fun. We got to make sure she gets a slice of pizza or something out here in New York because um, because because she, she's kind of new, but she's super excited to play in Brooklyn and at Barclays. Thank you for the insider information, the great insight from general manager Jonathan Cole, who put, pulled up and hearing from last year's overall number one draft pick in Sabrina Ionescu, just so exciting and, and meaningful. And it's a great way to enter tonight's draft. Uh, the WNBA draft coming up right now, virtual draft televised on ESPN and the ESPN app starting at seven Eastern right after uh, we finish up here. Basically, coverage will be starting after our party. And don't forget, the New York Liberty have the number 6, 17, 25, and 29 draft picks. Um, on behalf of the New York Liberty franchise, on behalf of the team governors, Joe and Clara Wusai, we just want to thank you guys for being here tonight, for bringing the energy, for being a part of this community and family, and say cheers to this fresh season. Happy draft night and good luck, y'all. <laughs>